Previously on MasterChef, the biggest showdown in MasterChef history. I know I'm a better cook than I. He's an arrogant son of a bitch, and I think he's a liar. And a shocking twist. Christian's out of here, and I'm just dumbfounded. Christian, congratulations. Upstairs. Oh! He's still here. Why? Tonight, I want you to taste this. Christian and Chef Ramsay face off. I've heard better. You may want to be smart and stop acting like an arrogant Am I going to stand up there and butter Jen's ass? Hell no. Throw me under the bus. Eight cooks remain to battle it out in front of three culinary heavyweights. At stake, a quarter of a million dollars and the title of Master Chef. There's only eight of us left. The pressure is huge, it's mounting, and I've got some amazing, talented competitors with me. Christian doesn't deserve to be here anymore. He needs to go home. I'm arrogant and cocky because I have a right to be. It feels awesome to be in the top eight. Top eight? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right, guys, you know what today is, right? You got a big brown square in front of you. What does that mean? <laughs> mystery box. It's a mystery box <laughs> challenge. As with every mystery box challenge, the contestants have to prepare, cook, and present one incredible dish using all or some of the ingredients inside the box. We'll taste the top three dishes, and the cook with the best dish will get a critical, critical advantage in the next challenge. I started off in this competition on a huge high note. I rocked out on like the first couple of challenges, and ever since then, I've really been going downhill. Ready to lift those boxes? Yes. yes. On the count of three. One. Two. Three. Oh. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, today it's surf and turf day. Ah! Ooh, I don't do so well with squiggly, slimy things. <laughs> now, take a good look. You've got the most amazing live jumbo shrimp. Phenomenal Alaskan king crab. Live crawfish. Buffalo ribeye. The most amazing dry aged porterhouse steak. And then those stunning little cubes, short ribs. It's surf and turf time. And uh, I'm thinking, I'm going to win this one. You've got 45 minutes to take all or some of those ingredients under the box and turn it into something magical. Today, for our mystery box, we have 45 minutes to complete our dish. What happened to an hour? 45 minutes, starting from... Now, off you go. Good luck. Tonight's mystery box will really test the final eight home cooks. With only 45 minutes to prepare a dish, it's all about making quick and intelligent choices. Not only do they have the beautiful surf and turf items to choose from, they may also use items from the pantry to really make the protein shine. Whoa. Only the top three dishes will be tasted by the judges. Today, I'm doing a Cajun-inspired surf and turf with crawfish and buffalo ribeye. Forty-five minutes. Yeah, not um, a lot of time. What would you do? What would I do? I'd use the bison ribeye. Um, I'd counteract that with something a little bit more sweet. I'd use the Alaskan king crab. I would do the uh, New York strip. I'd take it off the bone, actually, roast it off, and I would do a crawfish risotto with a little bit of uh, corn relish. We've given the grounds to be successful before they even began cooking. Yeah, absolutely. So they have to take it to the next level to really impress it. Fifteen minutes gone. Thirty minutes to go. What are you making for us today, Christine? Um, he almost got me. <laughs> I think I'm gonna do crab and crawfish and shrimp. You okay? Me, yeah. Okay. All right, good luck. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right, Jennifer, what are you doing? I'm doing a risotto. 
I'm making a little bit of shrimp stock. I'm actually using the crab meat. Uh, I'm going to break that down. I already have my short ribs in. They're going. I'm going to break those down, mix it into my risotto, right. mix in some of the crab. Okay. Wow. I mean, that's, uh, that's ambitious. Yeah. Who's going to struggle across this, Mr. Um, Bob? You know, Christine's, Christine's mind's not really here today. Ah! Shrimp. Shrimp. Shrimp is jumping. <laughs> Who do you want to see struggle, more importantly? To see Christian go home, I wouldn't say I'd be sad. Mm -hmm. Who's the one person that you fear every time you face a challenge? If I had to pick somebody in the kitchen, I'd say Adrian's very talented, very gifted, very thoughtful. I'm worried mostly about Jennifer, just because she's also been a big winner in the mystery box challenges. But I never had the judges spit out my food, and I haven't had the judges throw food at me, and I haven't had the judges throw my food in the trash, which has happened to her. That's hot. Adrian, are you a recipient and a winner of two mystery boxes? Yes, Chef. Third one in sight? Yes, Chef. What are you doing? It's a beer braised short ribs and um, crab salad. I'm trying to show off a little bit here. I'm really trying to impress you guys. Just make sure you show off on the plates. Yes, Chef. All right, Christian. So what do you got for us today? I'm making a uh, orange carrot ginger emulsion. You're going to rice these potatoes here. I'm going to run the potatoes through the uh, food mill. You think that uh, everyone's on equal footing with this challenge? Um, I think a lot of people cook steak and seafood, but I mean, you only have 45 minutes. There's only so much you can do. Right. So, some interesting things. A lot of risk taking, people braising short ribs in 45 minutes. You wouldn't attempt to braise them even in a pressure cooker. No, not at all. When you have those other options, some other great cuts, why would you go with a short rib? Although I love the idea of the risotto. Love it. It's a modern serpent turf. That's exactly what we were talking about, taking mm -hmm. the concept of Serpent Turf, interpreting yeah. it, making your own, mm -hmm. and blowing us away. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Derek seems a little bit confused. Mm -hmm. He's doing like a crab salad with a simply seared steak. And Christian's having some trouble back there. His potatoes are under season. Yeah, I hope it works. Yeah. 35 minutes gone, 10 minutes to go. How are we doing, man? Very, very good. Good. Tell me what you got. I am searing my beautiful bison ribeye right now. This new all-steel MasterChef pan. Yeah. They don't have any PTFEs on them. They have thermal on yeah. them. Yeah. Oh, it's gorgeous. It smells amazing from here. Thanks, Chef. OK, Susie, what are you doing? Uh, I'm doing a bisque. Yes. I, it's a shrimp bisque. Mm -hmm. And then a steak. I'm just letting it marinate. I just put a little bit of garlic, salt, pepper. The overcomplicated stance you take on cooking sometimes yeah. has come back to bite you on the ass. It definitely has, Chef. It'd be nice to see you win a mystery box challenge. Just over five minutes to go. After observing the home cooks throughout the challenge, the judges will select three dishes to taste. So these final seconds of plating could be the difference between success and failure. Holy shit, that's hot. One minute left. No time for backup. Beef better be cooked. And I got to start plating. Taste, taste, taste. Here we go. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and stop! Here we go. Ten seconds to go. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and stop! <laughs> well done. In this mystery box challenge, the judges will taste just three dishes. The winner will be given a huge advantage in the next round. We were looking for something highly creative and inventive. We've chosen the top three. This first dish used short ribs. That was a very ballsy move. Congratulations. Adrian, well done. Adrian hasn't been very consistent throughout this competition. He's been on super highs and he's been on like major lows. So I'm really, really surprised that Adrian's in the top three. I don't think he deserves it. Third time in the top three with the mystery box. Beer braised short ribs uh, and black garlic. It's like contrast with the crab salad. It's like really bright, acidic, slightly sweet. Yeah, you sat it on the bone. Yeah. Is that for decorative? Yeah, definitely for decorative, but just, you know, short rib comes on the bone, and when you braise it, that yeah. adds to the flavor of it. Well, it's going to be a big ask. 
to not make those short ribs rubbery in 45 minutes. Right. OK. It's delicious. I mean, a very modern take, very dangerous uh, and serve and turf. It's good, but it's not magical. But yeah, you've pulled it off. Thank you, Chef. Yeah, you are back uh, with a vengeance. Great job. Thanks, Chef. It's really zingy and bright. Still a little bit one-dimensional, I think. Right. Flavors are nice, though. Brave using short ribs. 45 minutes would be the limit. It wasn't even like a real cook time, you know, so real jeopardy there. Right. You've been uh, extremely hit or miss in this composition. This one is uh, out of the park. Very, very good. Thanks, guys. All right, this next dish utilized a great restraint, but was able to let some heat really come through. That dish belonged to Susie. Oh, my God. <laughs> I definitely do not think Susie is still the front runner. There's a lot of people that have consistently won in this competition, and they're going to inch her out. Oh, my god. I did a prawn bisque and a bison with a pan gravy sauce. I really wanted the essence of both ingredients to come out in themselves, so mm -hmm. I really wanted to simplify this dish. Susie's going simple? Yeah. Simple, yeah. Miss Smarty Knickers is going simple. I, I feel like I've got something blocked in my ears. Well, let's see. Soup is begging for a touch of seasoning in terms of that last little finishing touch. However, it's absolutely delicious. It's got the right kind of creamy texture. The tails are in there, and they just melt in your mouth. Great sear on the steak. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's a weird combination, but it works. When you cook and let the ingredients shine, you're unstoppable. That is delicious. Thank you, Chef. Well done. Thank you. You haven't been up here since the first mystery box, right? That's correct. Weeks ago. Weeks ago. I think that if you keep on uh, cooking like this, your stay with us here may continue to extend. So, Thank you. congratulations. Thank Good you job. so much. OK, so the third cook presented a dish that was a big wow for us because it showed technique, insight, intellect, all the things that we're expecting at this level of the competition. Jennifer, why don't you come up here and bring us your risotto? Well done. I don't know what it is with Jennifer. I can't imagine that she's making better food than me. I uh, got the short ribs in right away. I combined both uh, vegetable stock and chicken stock and took the shrimp for the broth for the risotto. And I took the crab meat, broke it down, and I butter poached it. See, I call those the goodies. Yeah. You know, <laughs> when I do a risotto, I like to have almost 50% rice, 50% of the goodies, so that every bite, you really get some of that stuff. Flavor is incredible. Thank you, chef. Really delicious. 90% of most line cooks wouldn't be able to hit a risotto that well. Thank Great you. job. Thank you so much. OK. You hit the perfect risotto, and it's phenomenal. And if the rest of the contestants can taste the seasoning in that risotto, I tasted a bland, bland, dreadful mashed potato. But there's the benchmark. Christian, I want you to come down and taste this. Because when you put mashed potatoes on a plate like that, you've got to understand what you're up against. And it is of a benefit, and I hope you see the difference. Pretty good. I've had better. Look at me. You may want to be smart and start acting like an arrogant But let me tell you something. It's cooked perfectly and it's seasoned beautifully. Your mashed potatoes are bland. And so I want you to identify the difference, hoping that you've got the intelligence to take it to the next level and learn from it. Because all of a sudden, over the last couple of weeks, you've shut down. Because you can't learn anymore. And that's pretty obvious in the results you're putting on the plate. 
It tastes good. I'm not going to deny that it tastes good, but I have had better risottos. <laughs> Am I going to stand up there and butter Jen's ass? Hell no. Throw me under the bus. Jennifer, well done. Thank you, Chef. Amazing. Thank you so much. Thank Great you. job. Thank you. You know what, buddy? You keep saying I don't belong here. Okay. Bring it on. Bring it on. Okay. We're only looking for one winner who will gain a huge advantage in the next stage of this competition. Is it Adrian? You placed a, a sort of robust short rib in an elegant way. Feeling really confident, I, and I'm hoping, and I feel that I won this for sure. Susie, the highlight was the bisque. It shouldn't have been the star. It should have been the compliment. But you managed to make one simple and delicious, and the bisque stunning. I think I might actually have a shot to win a mystery box challenge. Seriously, this is awesome. Or is it the risotto? I didn't come here to be second best. I came here to win, came here to put everything on the plate, and I've shown that I do belong here. Okay, tough decision. Really tough decision. Congratulations. The top three surf and turf dishes have been tasted, but only one can win this mystery box challenge. This is a third mystery box win. I've won two mystery box challenges. It's mine. I know that I nailed it. It's me. It's gotta be me. I'm just like excited for the third win. Congratulations. Jennifer. Oh, <laughs> you buddy. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer. Every time Jennifer wins something, I'm like, damn it. She won again. Lucky number three. Congratulations. Let's go. In the elimination test, at least one person will leave Master Chef. And now Jennifer will be given a huge advantage as she gets to pick the ingredient or style of food that everyone must cook with. Today, it's all about our childhood. Joe, Graham, and I are about to show you three amazing dishes that hold huge memories of all our childhood. You will pick one, and everyone will cook that dish. Okay. Okay, brace yourselves for a shock. Recognize this little booger? Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the scary news. Even at the age of four, he really went for that scare. He looks like someone out of the omen. <laughs> Come on, I was a cute little guy. Look at that. <laughs> he grew up eating around Greenwich Village and traveling throughout Italy. And you know what his favorite food was? Pasta. Wrong. The most popular food in the world. Italy's gift to humanity. Oh, God. <laughs> yes, it's the almighty pizza. My grandmother would cook me a focaccia pizza with great buffalo mozzarella and a fluffy tomato sauce every day after school. And then there's this guy. Already rubbing his belly at age five. <laughs> now, my childhood favorite dish, it was mac and cheese. It's hot, it's cheesy. I loved it back when I was a kid, and I love it today. Okay, recognize this little punk? And <laughs> uh, clearly the cutest. And that photo was taken three months after I lost my virginity. <laughs> now, Something that still holds a huge memory today. Tomato soup with grilled cheese. Even when you're feeling down, a bowl of tomato soup just gives you that lift and the grilled cheese just sends you to heaven. Yes. But listen, we're looking for something along the lines of an adult gourmet version of our childhood memories. Jennifer, what's it going to be? Well, I grew up in all three of them and... The theme was Graham, Joe's, and mine, childhood favorites. I think it's going to be great. Christine's a mom, I'm a dad, and I make food for my kids all the time, so I think it shouldn't, shouldn't be too hard. The choices were pizza, mac and cheese. Yeah! <laughs> or tomato soup and grilled cheese. I really hope Jennifer chooses anything but tomato soup and grilled cheese. The dish that Jennifer picked and my childhood favorite. 
tomato soup and grilled cheese. <laughs> Here's the catch. You have to present us with a stunning, delicious tomato soup and a grilled cheese in 45 minutes. 45 minutes. The longer you have for soup, the better. Just for those flavors to intermingle with one another. In 45 minutes, it's not a lot of time. You've got five minutes in the pantry to shop for the ingredients that could absolutely make or break your dish. Ready, set, go. The grilled cheese thing for me is tough, so I grab a bunch of different cheeses, and then I see foie gras. It's an ingredient that you normally don't ever get to work with. I've actually never used it before, so I'm thinking I'm going to get it and maybe use it if it speaks to me. Let's go, guys. Let's go, let's go. So we get back to our stations, and there's these giant friggin' pictures of us from when we were little kids. I am the way that I am. Oh, my God. Oh, my goodness. Susie. You look like you're on Star Search in that picture. <laughs> ben, did you make that pizza? Yes, and it won a blue ribbon. <laughs> now, at the back of this elimination challenge, at least one of you will be leaving MasterChef. Your 45 minutes starts from now. Off you go. On paper, this is an easy challenge. You know, tomato soup, grilled cheese. But you really have to elevate it. And what's going to be difficult about this is you kind of got to think about what am I going to do with grilled cheese that works with what I've done with the soup. They have to come together. So, big stumbling blocks in terms of issues. Soup being too thin, lackluster in flavor. Too thick, too thick. Right? Could be a little chunky. Lack of imagination, too literal, I think is the biggest risk. Sure. It's not going to impress, it's not going to stand out. It's not what we're asking for. Toughest part for me today is definitely the soup. I'm a little bit nervous about that. 15 minutes gone, 30 minutes to go. Right, Susie, you have just popped out of this competition now and you're sort of back in the game. And it'll be a great shame to see you go on the back of a bowl of tomato soup and a grilled cheese. Why is yours going to be so different? My tomato soup is updated. We've got bourbon in there and it's going to be in an heirloom tomato that I'm roasting right now. Sounds like you're going complicated again, Susie. Not at all. We're down to eight. Yes, yeah, Chef. At least one of you's leaving. Yeah. Who is it? Um... Christine. Christine's been a little loopy from the beginning. I, I really think that she needs to leave the competition. I'm working on, a, um, I think, a green tomato uh, soup. Um, it seems to be like I'm the only one that picked green tomatoes. Adrian, doing a foie gras grilled cheese sandwich and creamy tomato, tomato soup. soup. Foie gras and tomato? Yeah. Would you put that together? No. It's a lot of rich flavors there. <laughs> Derek's going for a traditional rustic, sort of chunky, oven roasted vine tomato soup. From what I see from the rest of the field, I think he might be outclassed. Yeah. I think he's gone a little too simple. That's what I'm worried about also with Christine. It's like a chunky, roasted tomato soup, but we need to see it elevated. Sure. We made that. Later. Just over 15 minutes left, everybody. 15 minutes. I completely cut myself, and there's blood all over my board. I can't use anything from this board. I have to start from scratch, and I only have like 15 minutes left. I'm so screwed. Just over 15 minutes left, everybody. 15 minutes. I just cut myself and I bled on uh, the bread that I was using there, so I'm not using that board at all. I have to start from scratch. Season. Readjust. You create one stunning portion. Five minutes to go. And for at least one of you, your last minutes in the MasterChef kitchen. Come on. I get my grilled cheese done and it tastes delicious. I taste my soup. 
and it's a disaster. Something has gone horribly wrong with my suit. 30 seconds to go. Finishing touches in there now. Come on. Finish, finish, finish. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and stop. The judges will now taste all eight dishes. The contestant with the worst dish will be leaving the Master Chef kitchen. Susie, let's do it. I can't believe I finished my bowl. It definitely came down to the wire. I'm literally in my pants, honestly. Today I've got a 3G uh, grilled cheese sandwich. A 3G? Yeah, I've got a little bit of goat cheese, smoked gouda, and a little bit of gruyere. The tomato soup that's chunky. It's also got a little bit of bacon in there, and it also has roasted red pepper. Very simple, yeah. but flavors that we all understand, you know? Really, really cohesive dish. You should be psyched. Thank you. What's in the soup? Uh, shallots, teeny tiny bit of mushrooms, I deglazed with bourbon. And you can totally taste the bourbon. It's amazing. And you taste not only the bourbon, yeah. you taste like the sweet toast from the bourbon barrels. It's amazing. Wow. Yeah, it's almost like a vanilla one. It takes vanilla or tropical, but it's the toast from the bourbon barrels. Amazing. Congratulations. Good job, Susie. OK. One big question. Where's the tomato? Uh, it's, what yeah. do you mean? Yeah, it's you over there. It? You want to see it? OK. Of course I do. You told me you're serving tomato soup in a freaking roasted tomato. And I want to see that tomato. Why did you change your mind? Um, I, I thought it was overly complicated, but it was going to explode. Well done. Good choice. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's delicious. Thank you. It is absolutely, <laughs> freakily delicious. Thank you, Chef. Great job. Thank you so well much. Well done. The judges talk about Susie's dish being great. Fine, whatever. The fact that it came out pretty perfect, I think it's more of an accident. Okay, Adrian, come on up. I didn't roast the tomatoes, so it's a little more acidic. It's garnished with chives and a lemon honey creme fraiche. The sandwich, I got layers of manchego, blue cheese, honey, bacon, and the foie gras that you saw earlier. It's a cream-based tomato soup. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's where you gotta be very careful in terms of the level of cream. So you got the cream in the soup, and then you're gonna put bloody foie gras in between two slices of fried bread. So rich. I wanted it modern, but bold. You know, it's way over the top. Christian, please come forward. Today for you, chef, I made a creamy tomato soup with lobster. And for my grilled cheese, uh, I used a baguette, rubbed it with some foie gras, I melted the cheese, which is drunken goat, fontina, mm -hmm. and uh, there's a piece okay. of prosciutto in there as well. The soup could have used a little more seasoning. The flavors are good, but it's a little dry for my liking. Okay. I think at this point, the judges have uh, been a little bit harder than, on me than other competitors because they, you know, know that I'm going to be a great chef someday. Ben, let's go. Blow us away. I'm walking up to present this soup to the judges, and it's literally disgusting. And I wonder if I should maybe just trip so that it falls on the ground. This is an awful position to be in. I really wanted to oven roast my tomatoes to concentrate that flavor, but 45 minutes just isn't enough time to do that. But it actually works well with my sandwich. My sandwich is incredibly rich, bold flavors. The soup is thin, tomatoey, light, great for dipping. You would make a great politician. Thank you, chef. Absolute the way out of a paper bag. My initials aren't BS for nothing. No. Okay, soup. How do you cook the tomatoes? Quick blanch to peel and seed the tomatoes with a... Uh... Okay, gonna stop there. When Gordon tastes my soup, he does one of these, and I know I've, I've lost it. That is one of your worst performances in MasterChef. Damn. 
Tastes like um, the kind of acidity you have in unripe grapes. Tomatoes are inherently very acidic. And unfortunately, that's all you taste in that soup. And it's to a point where it's almost unpalatable. After that soup, I mean, any redeeming quality that sandwich might have doesn't even play. Big mistake. This is the worst thing that I've produced on this show. I'm going home. Any redeeming quality that sandwich might have doesn't even play. Big mistake. Sorry. I expected it, but it's frustrating and upsetting, and I really feel like in the back of my brain, they're going to nail me to the wall and send me home. Tracy, let's go. What have we got here? We have a um, Mediterranean-style tomato soup. I use fresh tomatoes, a little mm -hmm. tomato paste, with right. a pancetta and fontina grilled cheese. delicious. It's dark, rich, spicy, but just explodes. You got it right. It's very gourmet and it is delicious. Thank you, Chef. Thank Good you job. so much. Jennifer, please come up. She wants to pretend like she knows about that she doesn't, and I can't wait till Jennifer goes home. It's roasted um, heirloom tomatoes and plum tomatoes. I think the lobster plays off well with the heat. Where does the heat come the from? The heat comes from the chipotle, ancho chilies, that I um, put in, stewed through it, and then the chili, just a little bit of chili powder. It's very good. Like a very nice exercise in richness versus base and heat. I don't know if they're perfectly symbiotic together, but they're both kind of individually good in their own respective light. Thanks, Joe. Okay, Derek, come on up and join us. I'm excited about this dish. It, it looks simple, but it's got these big, bold flavors behind it. Uh, you've got a creamy tomato and bacon gorgonzola soup. The grilled cheese, there's a very thinly sliced tomato, some bacon, some brie, and some gouda. What other ingredients are in here? Cheeses. There's no other cheese but the gorgonzola. It's like tomato and cream and bacon all hanging out at the schoolyard, and then this big gorgonzola bully comes along and just beats the crap out of them. It wasn't coming up with a cheese soup mm -hmm. flavored with tomatoes. I want a tomato soup. Right. The sandwich um, looks like it's come out of a diner. Today, yeah, you've missed the boat. lost the dish. All I taste is gorgonzola. It shuts everything else down. Last up, Christine. Let's go, please. I have a roasted green heirloom tomato soup with a provolone and goat cheese with bacon. Very acidic. It's got that big kick. Is that what you wanted? Maybe I should have left the vinegar off. Talk to me about your grilled cheese. You've got provolone. Mm -hmm. Goat cheese. Mm -hmm. Why the two together? Because I love goat cheese and I love provolone. Here's the issue. The combination doesn't work together and it's sort of marred by the vinegar outburst. It's just blowing acidic. Let's just hope this isn't your last cooking experience inside this competition. Yeah, it's got a really strange texture. It's almost baby food-esque. It's almost got like this oily thing happening where it's seeping out of it and it's... Okay. Um, all right, thanks. Oh, yeah, it's, it smells volatile. Cream and vinegar, very difficult together. Okay. Kind of a pretty big technical error. Hopefully, it doesn't send me home. 
provolone is a is a cow milk cheese. The other one is is goat. It's kind of like completely out of context, very contrasting, not complementing, and it's very greasy. Okay. That's okay. No, it's not okay. I'm just listening to you, saying yes. Thanks. I don't know what she was thinking. The grilled cheese looks pretty disgusting. <laughs> After tasting all eight dishes, the judges must choose between the ones that brought back fond childhood memories and the ones that inspire nightmares. Let's start off with the two best dishes. The first one belongs to... Tracy, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Your dish was fantastic. Thank you. But there was one dish out there that was a millimeter above its competition. Congratulations. Susie, great job. Are you joking? Out of everybody, you pick Susie. Thank you. I don't think she's the one to beat. She's the one that I want to beat up. OK. There were three dishes at the bottom. And for at least one of you, it will be the end of your dream in MasterChef. The first dish belongs to... Christine, come down here, please. I'm not surprised that Christine is in the bottom three. There's a lot of people here that shouldn't be here, so I'm hoping we're going to cut out the fat. The second dish... Derek, please come forward. I'm not surprised. Not a one of them liked it. I'm hoping they'll take a little bit of pity on me and kind of just say, you know what, he's got some fight left in him. I'm hoping that I'm going to make it through this and survive somehow. The third dish belonged to Ben Starr. Come up here and join us. If this soup is the thing to send me home from MasterChef, I'm going to go completely stark raving crazy. All of you, Christine, Derek, and Ben, You've brought joy to all three of us and really blown us away with some magical moments. <sighs> this is where it gets really difficult for us. <sighs> this is where it gets really difficult for us. Ben, step forward, please. Your soup was way below par. Yes, Chef. But you're staying. Back to your station, please. They've given me one last chance. I am going to take it and use it. Next is going to be brilliance. Christine and Derek, you've both had highs and lows across this competition. And the journey has been immense. I mean, really immense. But this is where it ends. The person leaving MasterChef is... Christine, I'm sorry. You, madam, have been a breath of fresh air. You do not stop cooking from now on in. And you've got to walk out that door with your head up high. OK? Because you've surprised yourself. And remember what you've done inside this competition. You've done bloody well, but don't stop. Keep cooking. <laughs> I'm so proud of myself and that I made it this far. <laughs> Sucks, but I'm so happy. <laughs> I can't wait to go home and see my son and give him a big hug. And I know that this is not the end of my journey. There's so much more out there for me and I'm gonna kick everyone's ass one day. <laughs>
Derek. It's not over yet. <sighs> I'm really sorry. You are leaving Master Chef tonight. Derek, your passion is extraordinary. And you have a very strong connect to food. You stay on that journey. Next time you're in New York, stop by one of my restaurants. You know where to find me. We could have an espresso together and talk about your, I think, very optimistic career in the culinary arts. Oh, that'd be, that would be sick. Thank you, Derek. Come on up here. Say goodbye. Thank you. Congratulations. Being eliminated is no fun. Going home now, you know, it, it's depressing. You know, I really would have loved to be around more, to, to learn more and, you know, to cook more. But I'm definitely going to pursue cooking much more seriously than I ever even thought about before. You may be someplace in Manhattan or L.A. or somewhere, wherever I end up. You may be eating my food. You may not know it's me, but I might be behind there making it. There's only six of you left. And tomorrow, you're facing a huge challenge. Get some rest, because you're going to need it. Well done, and good night. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you. Next time on MasterChef, the opportunity of a lifetime. Tonight, you'll be taking over this restaurant. Quickly turns into a disaster. Two risotto, two hamachi, two beef, two scallops. Two, two risottos, two hamachi. Can I have an answer? Can I have a answer? Do you think that I am serving that out there? At the end of the night, one more home cook will be leaving the MasterChef kitchen. Please take off your apron.